Welcome to the video. Thanks so much for tuning in, sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome. Welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness and the highest levels of love light. I just want to go into a little flow, um, a little channeling with my guides and kind of see what's going on energetically. So I invite you just to maybe go into your heart space, feel into um, what I'm going to be sharing through my own um, intuitive connection. I'm gonna do a little toning, helps shift the frequency. Some energy. Four, the channel to be clear, we must invite all of our obligations to disappear. All that we are obligated to, play on words, all that we are pointed into, all directions point inward. And we must go within to cleanse. We must go within to feel into what it is that is inside of us. Each and every one of us holds a well, if you will. I'm seeing the cup that runneth over, uh, the holy grail, the holy, the energy, the wholeness, and the oneness that is part of our creative functionality. I'm seeing control alt delete on like a computer screen as well. For our function here is uh, being bogged down at times by that which it is we are tuning into or that we are uh, seeking outside of us. And so we must continually go within to find our resin, to find our resonance, to go back within to find our, um, our continuity, if you will, the ability to traverse through this reality with our highest functions functioning at all times. For many of us are pulled into multiple directions and it creates a discord or a disharmony in our um I'm hearing internal revenue, like we're not adding up to what it is that we could truthfully add up to. And this creates a division. And within this, um, I'm hearing divide and conquer. We then agree to falling into a time trap, if you will, or into a scale of uh, disharmony or non-resonance, resonance, I'm resonance, um, hearing coherence. And the more that we do this, the more we continue to co-create from that linearity, from that scale, from that particular musical quality that does not hold all of the qualitative, qualitativeness, <laughs> play on words. Um, I'm hearing it's relative, like relativity. It's like we're going with one equation when we could actually be connecting into so many, so much more. We share with you this particular message right now because there is a deeper ability that is coming online for many and this ability to see clairvoyantly is opening up the channels and the portals that many of you already know that you are many of you already know you are a channel and a portal to the divine and yet this has been divinely timed as well from another perspective some of you have let go of the idea that you could be more and you have given into the ideas that have been taught or passed down gener generationally that are generally, going back to general relativity and the theories, are generally that which is no longer in true congruity with what it is that you truly are able to access and uh, connect with. For you are all more than meets the eye, and each of us is seeking to go within to see the eye in all things, to see the center of the eye so that we can rein in the storm, if you will, so that we can control our own storm and therefore create that which it is we are. I'm going to pause for a moment. Connected to and brilliantly reflecting. And so the energies that are reflecting back to us right now have a brilliance within them. 
And we are inviting those who are listening to this now at any place, time, or space that you are currently in as you listen, that you tune into your own genius. You tune into your genetics, geneticists, genesis, your beginning, and begin to see the abilities that you hold within clairvoyantly, clairaudiently, clairradiantly, if you will. And this clear radiance, this clear radiance is being fine tuned. And so we invite you to continuously tune in so that you may find this inner tune. So you may hear the resonance that is seeking to send its signal through you. For you are the fingers on the keyboard. You are that who is playing the tune. You are the writer and the singer and the song that is being sung. You are the keys that are within the signature of the sound of the frequency that is within you and your skin suit. So therefore you must go past the suit. You must move into a higher suit. You must seek a higher resonance to really find this inner resonance. As we seek this residency inside of the molecular archaeology that we are part of, plan words, our key arc, an electrical arc, keyology, key as in uh, chi, key, K I, you begin to find P H I in this. Uh, synchronicity. You begin to synchronize. You begin to sync up with the keys. You begin to synchronize with time. You begin to fluctuate from a higher resonance that allows you to sync up to the higher keys that are in a different frame of reality, that are being born right now with your own ability to see clairvoyantly consistency. And let us play with that word for a moment. So I'm being called to play with this. So I'm on etymology, etym online. And one of the things they're kind of showing is clairvoyant. And of course, we all know this as having psychic gifts, powers of clairvoyance, but it's having insight, um, clear sighted, discerning, judicious, from clair, clear, to voyant, to see, right? I know that some of this is redundant, but it's fun to play with this to really see the root etymology of the words. Psychic sense. So I'm going to go into what clear means, because what I'm seeing here is their, their, their guidance team is showing me that we can see more clearly than we are currently using our abilities. We think of clairvoyance um, and psychic abilities as something that is not everybody has it. I've been told many times by certain people that, oh, that's just a gift that you have, or I don't have that. And time and time again, I'm shown otherwise through my own ability to see clearly. Also, I'm being shown that doesn't mean that I can see clearly my own life. I can see other people's stuff because sometimes my own ability to see what's going on in my reality is clouded by fear by um, lack of, um, well, all kinds of things, trust, trusting my own ability to see clearly is huge in my world. But I want to read this because I think it's very relevant because they're calling this clear radiant, which is ironic because I did not know what this was. And the first sentence on clear is giving light, shining and luminous. Trust that the words that come through in my readings and channelings have a deeper meaning is what I'm always guided to say, see, feel, and hear. Because so many times I've done videos and I'm just like, I can't believe I'm getting ready to post this <laughs> back in the day. Now I just trust that whatever comes through is going to be relevant for someone. So clear, excuse my, whew, my yawns. Not only am I tired, but I'm also clearing energy right now. Luminous, not turbid, transparent, allowing light to pass through, free from impurities, guiltless, innocent, bright, pure, fully light, eyes of vision, plainly audible, 
distinct, resonant of the mind, keen witted, ah, clear and loud when it has to do with sounds, bright, distinct, manifest, plain, evident, glorious. The prehistoric sense evolution to light and color involves an identification of the spreading of sound. I'm hearing, and the word was one, and the word was with God, and the spreading of light. Shining of pitch, distinct, ringing, high, like a high sound. Whew. Mm, boy, I'm going to go deeper into this. Proto-Indo-European root meaning to see. It forms all or part of advice, advise. Belvedere, which I'm going to look that up because that's kind of fun. Clairvoyant, deja vu, druid, eidet, eidetic, eidetic, like an edict. I don't know if that's, I guess that's how you pr pronounce edict. Sorry, I butchered that one. Small rope, chain, or wire. A connected account of, of narration of some happening. A way of proceeding. It is the hypothetical source of evidence for its existence is provided by the Sanskrit Vita I know. <laughs> so, to see, to know. I could go on and on. It's fun to play with this. Interestingly enough to call, to, to low, make a noise like a cow language. So this all goes into, I'm seeing this symbology here of clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsound, it's clairsentient, it's clear knowing, clear sounding, clear speaking to, um, and this comes back to resonant. So I'm just seeing how important it is, it, it is for us to just open to this clear sense of knowing, and this comes back to, you know, as Jesus says in the Bible, know thyself. It's the sound, the original sound. So many of us are opening to this deeper knowing. And for a long time, this has been blocked by all the other stuff that keeps us in a state of um, dissonance, that keeps us in a state of denial, that keeps us in a state of bound. So I'm hearing like, we can't quite make a decision. We don't know, we feel confused, we doubt our clarity. Many people are starting to have these inner knowings and they don't know how they know, they just know. And it's important for us, the more we know thyself by going within, the more we can learn to trust these knowings. Um, so this is just some things to kind of play with. And as a, we stabilize, I'm being called to play with this. So the more clarity we have when we make an edict. So this is a play on words with um, eidetic. Edetic. So an edict is a command or instruction given by someone of authority. Well, we are the ones making these edicts in our lives. We are the ones that are presenting. And I'm seeing this, what they're trying to show me, because I was guided to go deeper into this edetic. There's something called an edetic memory, which is also photographic memory and total recall. Is the ability to recall an image with, from memory with a high precision after seeing it only once and using it uh, without using it. Uh, so we'll just play this. Um, it's interesting that it's, they say it's usually in children and oft, uh, not always seen with adults. It's interesting that at a certain time in our lives, we start to, as children, we just, we just know. We don't question those things. And as we get older, we, we develop self-doubt. And part of this has to do with discernment. We get hurt and we learn from that. From so to speak, but then because of that, we say, all right, 
<clears throat> I was hurt or I made a wrong choice, therefore I can't trust myself or I can't trust someone else. And these are part of the human experience. And this is where we begin to become more separate from the I am, from the knowing that I am that which I seek to know. Um, this sense of we start seeking something outside of us. We put our trust in other people or no one. But I mean called to kind of play with that. So um, this might be developing more uh, in a stronger fashion for more people right now. We might be starting to bring back the memory. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of people starting to have like a photographic memory come up of their past, which not all of us want, right? Some of us go through things and we're like, I don't want to remember that. But we're starting to remember things with acuteness, with this acute clarity that allows us to interpret our environment in a different way. And it allows us to change our frequency around that memory. And then we make a proclamation or an edict from a different signature. So we begin to see things differently and say, okay, I now choose this, not that. Or I saw this one way, now I see it another way. And I'm able to then devise a schematic, I'm just in flow, devise a schematic that allows me to isolate these memories or frequencies that are coming in so that I may revise what has accumulated within my field and supply myself with new eyes and a new rendition of what it was that I had previously um, locked myself into in the old schematic. Does that make sense? So I'm being called to play with those words a bit. What's ironic, I could just say that all in a, a rhyme, I suppose. But if I go back to edic, edetic, um, pertaining to the fac faculty of projecting images. So clairvoyance, we're coming back into seeing clearly. Um, it talks about pertaining to knowledge from edos, E-I-D-O-S, form and shape. So I'm seeing this. We are projecting into our reality, right, these memories. And so there's a reason that we see the same commercials over and over again on tele television. There's a reason we hear the same ads. We get these ideas, thoughts, and pictures kind of pushed on us. We're constantly being projected at us and we see that and then it's reflected back to us because we begin to see or view things from that perspective. We begin to take on the perspective of what our teachers have in, told us based on what they've learned, based on what their projections are. And I'm hearing future projections. And then we project from our own projector our eyes and our vision, our cones, our cone, we send that out and we begin to see more of that from a quantum level. Wow, the energies are really strong today, guys. I should not have had that coffee. Like, oh. So the signals that our brain is sending to us oftentimes are synaptically responding and branching out from more. And rather than sending the brain more signals of diversion that are creating us, diverting us away from our true ability or innate ability to see clearly and clairvoyantly, we are being called to go back within our own memory complex and to isolate these memories that are coming up for us to um, change, to shift, for us to puzzle piece together in a different set or order to things. And this changes our dominion. It changes our dominion from that which we were allowing ourselves to live within. And it gives us a bigger allowance 
it gives us, I'm seeing like we become the parents, like we've been taking an allowance from, you name it. Oh, I'm allowed to see this. I'm not allowed to see that. I'm allowed to have this amount of money. I'm not allowed to have that amount of money. I'm receiving this money only from this one source. I'm receiving this knowledge from this one source. But I'm seeing like our parents gave us an allowance based on our, well, their funds that were available to them. So that was limited in itself, but also what they felt we deserved based on our behaviors. So there's a lot of times been this, um, not that everybody's gotten an allowance. Some of us had to work <laughs> all of our lives for our own allowance, but we still had an allowance based on our hours of work. Do you see where I'm going with this? Based on our reality that we were a construct that we were operating within. And what my guides are showing me is that's expanded. So the more we allow ourselves to expand, the more our allowance expands too because we have more available to us. We have more available uh, constructs and we are constructing that as we go. And as we know more. So as we go within and we know more and we learn more about ourselves and we will learn more about the reality that we are existing within, knowledge is power, but not the knowledge necessarily that we've always been told to understand. It's the inner truths that are really being called to folk work, being called to focus on right now. That other knowledge out there is a great thing to combine with us, but we're not going to gain knowledge just from watching the television. We have to go into the universe, the universe. And that's always a play on words because when we go into the universe that is within us, we begin to speak the verse, the verbs, the words, the language, and we begin to, um, the stanzas, and we begin to stand within our own column right? Our own writing, our own signature, which is a wave that has a particular font and format. And we begin to reformat how it is that we sign up for things, how it is that we tune into things, how our song or sonnet is sounded out moving forward. And we begin to rearrange our alchemy, our frequency and our signatures so that our memory is sustainable. This is a play on words. For the sustainability at us being able to harness our memory has been traumatized. The trauma has been held within the cerebellum. I'm just going to play with this cerebrum within the folds of the brain because we have folded in on ourselves. We have gone into folding. Many of us have gone into hiding and we have hidden from that which we already knew as if we didn't know it. And now our technology that we live within, our reality that we live within, our own um, emblem of morality, this is a play on words. Um, morality doesn't just mean, well, that's, I mean, called play with that. So let's. I'm just seeing this in regards and respect to us morality. It has to do with not only our morality is how we interact with each other and humans, but I'm hearing this has to do with more reality. So we have more available options, again, that allowance, but also we see that we become more accountable. We have a distinction between um, good and wrong, but that isn't based on the old, the old beliefs of what we've been told, this is okay and this isn't. It's more of an internal compass that comes online and we begin to see more of what's available to us. And so we begin to trust our humanity. And a lot of people are in this place where they don't trust people to make the right decision. Well, that comes from us not being able to trust ourselves and making our own right decisions. So we really have to be able to trust that we are okay and that our ability to see is better than we think it is. And if we have moments, and this isn't the only message, I'm kind of going into to five different categories here or domains, right? Dominions, which I'm also being called to play with. But essentially we are really being called to trust our own guidance system and to be okay with what decisions we make. And we're human. We're gonna have moments where we lack the clarity. Other people though, are also lacking that clarity from time to time. So we need to let go of the need to really just trust what other people are telling us to do. We're each being called to individually step up and say, I can listen to my own 
way, if you will. And I can take into account, right, others and what they believe, but I have my own map to follow. And doing that, it leads us into our own deeper re realities. And this is a, all a plan words because much of what we have been adhered to, that's a plan words, what we've listened to, heard, herded to, what we've been adhered to, stuck to, what we've been uh, connected to, has lost its illusion. So of grandeur, it isn't what we thought it was, or it no longer holds the same beckoning. And I'm hearing again that sound, that ringing in the ears that we get when our guides are talking to us, when we've got these messages coming in, when we're having the solar activity, when we're having these activations inside of our body. We're being called to listen to that. You can ring my bell. We're being called to listen to that inner sound of heart centered. All right. So let us tune into this and jump. Let us take the leap and jump timelines, have a leap of faith in ourselves. Have a leap of faith in our own directional course and recognize that each decision that we make has been guided at some, at some level for our own inner expansion, for our own inner resource and knowingness and bring it back to our hearts. Bring it back to this, um, I'm hearing playing a words, contemporary design. For this is the now and we are being called to uh, listen to the voice inside of us, the voice of reason, the ability to listen clairvoyantly, clairaudiently, seeing, hearing, feeling to the messages that are being sounded out from within us. For our own guidance system is giving us the ability to recognize we are each a beautiful um, signal. We are each a beautiful light that is functioning in this reality as a light for one another, for we are each the one signaling back to one another sounds, frequencies, and images to delight in, to delight the senses. When, when did we stop being delighted? When did we stop allowing ourselves to reflect back into the inner uh, golden light of the inner child? The wonder, the sense of wonder, that deep knowingness, when we look into the eyes of a child, that love, that is reflected back to us of acceptance, of trust, of joy, of laughter. If we can continually come back to this time and time again, all that is not in resonance will begin to dilute, begin to feel diluted. It will not hold as much. Um, I'm just seeing a lot here. It won't be as loud. It won't be as depleting of our energy, we will begin to be filled from the cup that runneth over from our own inner resource of inner delight. So as we move into this holiday, this ability to feel into the celebration of joyous life, they're referring right now, it's 4th of July, so I'm just kind of tuning into that energy. We can feel into the network of other humans that are here to have a divine experience as we all are, but are here to feel that divine within them. And the more we can operate from that place of divinity, the light within me sees the light within you. We begin to let go of this old uh, sticky technology, the spider webs that have been woven to keep us moving in the same direction within the same patterns seeing the same reflections over and over again. Instead, we invite you to weave your own web and to step forward into the new contemporary view of you. You are your contemporaries. You are this ability to see, I'm seeing contemplating, oh, plain words, contemplative. And your roles will change because of this. You will feel a new role coming on. 
you will feel the ability to roll away from the old construct and to, I'm hearing rolling stone, roll into this new you with much less baggage, with le much less uncertainty. And this allows us to see the road ahead of us, but also to tune into our path clairvoyantly. And we want to touch on this briefly for clairvoyance does not mean we see everything clearly. Um, we instead are able to use our senses to guide us and others in our expansion. And so in some cases, our expansion requires us not to see clearly. It requires us to ask for the help of others, but not to become complacent not to rely only on that help from others and their ability to see, we must also take our own steps to weave. For when we are given the gift of others clairvoyance, we are weaving with them. We are utilizing their pictures, their projections, uh, hopefully from a place of neutrality, but it is their own functionality, which comes with prerequisites, which comes with, um, filtration systems that give us a projection based on that neutrality, but also based on their own memory or collective of memories that they then utilize to express a message. And so I mean called, like if I do a session with someone, I'm using my ability to see and um, interpret the messages that are coming from whoever's guides I'm working with, my own guides I'm working with, multidimensionality, I might, it just depends on who I'm working with. And sometimes I'm not shown certain things because that isn't the right way. This goes back to morality, that compass. It isn't necessarily the right time. So it'll be blocked. So then I change the angle slightly and I might get a little bit more of an answer around that from a different perspective. And so we're really being called to recognize that as we shift our angles, so that comes back to fonts and signatures, the angles of the letters, the keys, right? So as we shift our perspective, it changes the angle with which we are perceiving something. And it gives us a different variety or ability to see, I keep hearing clairaudiently, clairvoyantly with clarity because we're now seeing it from a different perspective. That gives us more answers back to the accountability and more, um, what, what did I say when you get a, a check? Anyways, so it's not always going to be clear cut. I'm seeing a diamond. Just because a diamond is clear cut, it does have many different angles and colors. And depending on how you look at it, that gives you a different perspective. So our life experiences are giving us a different perspective. What we're looking at on television is offering us an ability to see from someone else's perspective. So if, if someone is giving us advice, we're seeing things from their perspective, which can be very helpful. But what I'm being shown is many people have only gone through their lives doing things based on what other people have told them to. Even though they think they're making decisions on their own, they're, they really haven't uh, given themselves the full advantage of making the bigger decisions on a regular basis from a place of clarity. And so um, that's changing. I'm hearing rapidly. So it's helpful whenever we listen to someone else to use our discernment. And this comes back with clearer is has to do with discernment. So rein it back in and ask ourselves, how do I feel about that? What does that make me feel? Because sometimes we may disagree with something, but that disagreement can be coming from a judgment based on what we've been told to believe. Is it a true feeling within, or is there something else going, you know, I would generally disagree with that, but for some reason, I feel differently about this now. Why is that? And the more we dive in and we go inside and we meditate around that, we might get answers because we might realize what we believed is no longer true for us. What we thought was real no longer is. So why are we still making decisions 
based on our old reality structure that is falling apart. So the more we do this little steps, the more it opens to more, more opportunity, more abundance, more knowledge, more clarity, more clairvoyance, more movement, more adaptability, higher resonance, higher dimensions. And ultimately, if you've already opened all of that that I just mentioned, you're in a higher dimension. You're living from a different place or vibration of reality by allowing all those things to happen. And as those minute to minute, moment to moment adjustments are made, we then shift our reality in such a broad way that we're automatically on a different timeline. I think I went into like 10 different topics there. So whoever's watching, you might get, everybody might get something different from that. So I'm going to end on that note, maybe come back and play with these words later in love and light guys have a really wonderful, um, holiday. If you're in the United States listening to this and I'm being called to play with that. And I'm hearing as I tune into that every day that we are able to live and communicate and sing I'm getting emotional and dance and connect with the sun and connect with the earth and give someone a hug. That's a holiday. That's a celebration. Um, I'm hearing just celebrating the breath, celebrating the breadth, breaking bread, B-R-E-D, E-R-E-A-D-T-H, I believe. The breadth, how broad, how much we really do have access to in the form and the way of compassion, right? Exchange. Um, senses, touching the earth, holding a child, right? All of these things, enjoying your cup of coffee, blessing the water before you drink it, recognizing that water is a living source of our life, as well as the breath that we breathe in, all of this. So, and I, I share all this because as I channel, as these messages come in, it's for me just as much as it is for anyone listening. So it's important for us to recognize that we're always learning something. We're always expanding. We're always growing. And once we get on our path of, um, I guess, acceptance, we begin to accept these things. We don't have to necessarily accept in the sense of, oh, that is what it is. So I have to accept this. No, I mean, acceptance, like I relax, I'm relaxing into this, the more um, things just unfold in a synchronistic and, and kind of magical way. So this isn't necessarily going to be the case every day, but we have an opportunity every day to do something to bring us into that state, if that makes sense. And so the more we do that, the more that state becomes part of our resonance. And every time I say that now, I think of resin, R-E-S-I-N. We get, um, we're formed into that. It becomes more um, sustained, right? I think of the amber inside of a tree um, that holds the memory of something before. We're creating these memories now. We're creating these connection points. Um, and that's really important to recognize. And again, I see all these little symbols behind me. They're memories, they're connection points. They're strung together, they're reflections. <laughs> of uh, thoughts, feelings. So how much can we throughout the day feel good, have a good thought about something or someone, have a good feeling or thought about ourselves? That doesn't mean that all of them are going to be like that all day long, but maybe we can get to a point where the majority of them are. And then when we have these overwhelming moments of self-criticism, judgment or doubt, or someone else, the feelings and memories of compassion become stronger or more consistent than the feelings of self doubt. So we oscillate, but then we can kind of merge and integrate those feelings, become aware of them, dissolve them so that we can redefine, so that we can redirect, so that we can regain. So we can come back to a place of composure and then compose our sonnet 
from that space. So in love and light, guys. Namaste. <laughs>